Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special NBA Draft Lottery edition of More Sports and Less Levine. I'm Dave Bacon. We now know which team holds the top pick in the NBA Draft, and it is not our Cleveland Cavaliers. The Draft Lottery was not good to the Cavs in 2019, but it was very good to uh, David Griffin, former Cavs GM, who is now the general manager in charge of things for the New Orleans Pelicans as the New Orleans Pelicans, one of three long shots that get into the top four picks in the 2019 draft lottery. The Pelicans drafting first. Overall, they will get to choose Zion Williamson. They also have Anthony Davis, who they could potentially trade, or they could pair Williamson with Anthony Davis. Now Memphis Grizzlies picking second. The New York Knicks, who had the worst record all the way down to three, the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron's team, bumps up ahead of the Cavs, and the Cavs will pick fifth, the Sun sixth, the Bulls seventh, and the Atlanta Hawks eighth. So the Cleveland Cavaliers will be selecting fifth. Williamson will be long gone, as will the other two of the big three, uh, John Morant and R.J. Barrett as well. So the question becomes, who could the Cavs potentially draft? Who should be available or might be available at number five, assuming the Cavs don't move off of that five spot? Uh, one guy that is intriguing from Vanderbilt, Darius Garland. You see a 6'3", 173-pound guard, just 19 years old. Shoots the ball pretty well, 16.2 uh, points a game in the SEC, 54%. Field goal percentage also can hit that three at 48%. He's really good at creating a shot. He's a pretty good ball handler. He plays off threats to get his jumper in the lane too. He's a shifty ball handler as well. Now he does need to work on being a facilitator, you know, getting the ball to his teammates and being involved. And defensively, he kind of is what he is, lacks the upside that you would hope for. Another guy made a deep tournament run with Virginia, DeAndre Hunter, 6'8", 222 pounds, 21 years old, arguably the best defender in college basketball. You see pretty good shooter from the field, pretty good three-point shooter, 15 points a game. But again, potentially the best defender in all of college basketball, often takes on the other team's best player whether it's a point guard or a power forward, so he has some versatility. He scored both prolifically, too. You know, 21.3 is his adjusted average per 40 minutes. So his average per game down a little bit because he didn't play as many minutes. You put him on the court and he scores pretty well. Now he isn't really explosive, which is a concern in the NBA game, of course, and he is not one of those natural shooters but that is something that you can work on, your shooting stroke, something you can get in the gym and take a couple hundred shots a day, and that could definitely improve. Another guy to keep an eye on, another guy whose team made a pretty deep tournament run in the NCAAs, Jarrett Culver, 6'5", 190 pounds, just 20 years old, you see, averaged almost 19 a game, 6.4 rebounds, a lot of assists as well, 46%. A three a shooter from the field rather he's a shot creator who can generate offense on his own one of the things he needs to work on kind of inconsistent shooter um, but he is physical around the rim and he does not shy away from contact obviously really good things in the NBA but again kind of inconsistent shooter he has a really unnatural pause at the top of his release that kind of hurts his shooting ability, and he's also a below average ball handler. Those obviously concerns once you get into the NBA game. Another guy to keep an eye on from Duke, the third of the Dukies. Figures to be available, Cam Reddish, 6'9", 205 pounds, just 19 years old, 3.7 rebounds a game, field goal percentage not great, three point shooting not great. But he's a guy that teases you. He's got that elite physical profile. He looks like an NBA guy. He's the guy you want off the bus first because everybody looks at him and goes, oh, this guy can play the game. Pretty good shooter off of the dribble. Decent footwork. Has flashes where he's an elite defender. 
But again, he only shot 39% from two point range. So he's a tantalizing prospect in terms of talent and long term upside. He shows incredible flashes, but kind of frustrating because the production doesn't really match what you think you have as well. He also doesn't have that explosiveness. And the other thing that concerns you, sometimes it doesn't look like he's playing his hardest. But again, young guy, those are all things that can be corrected uh, from Cam Reddish. Here is an intriguing name to keep an eye on. It's Sekou Dumboya. He plays in a French professional league, has since he was 16. He will not turn 19 years old until December 23rd. So right around Christmas time, he turns 19. Young, raw, uh, you see points per game, not really where you want him to be, rebounds not lighten it up. His field goal percentage is improving, as is his three-point percentage. But again, this is a guy that's playing professionally and has since 16 years old. Really nice athlete, fluid, likes to run. You see, it, when you go and you look at his videos on YouTube from the French Professional League, you see a guy that can do the chase down blocks. He guards everybody on the floor, really versatile defender. Now again, young kid, doesn't have the greatest handles at all. Vision off the dribble isn't what you want. Shot selection, not the greatest. But again, 18 years old, playing in a pretty high level French professional league, actually was a teammate of Drew Joyce II as well, uh, over in the French professional league, just to give you a local tie. But an intriguing athlete with a lot of upside. Bottom line though is, uh, a, a disappointing draft night for the uh, draft lottery night for the Cavs is they get the fifth pick and certainly they had hoped to get somebody that would make a bigger impact with one of those top three. So now the wheeling and dealing and speculation begins. It will all be answered come NBA draft night. A lot of evaluations going on between now and then, but the Cavs end up with the fifth pick in the uh, NBA draft coming up.